house, God. We, we forget about the music. We forget about the, the preaching. We forget yeah. about the prayer. Things start going kind of, kind of well, and we kind of ease off over here where we really like it. Yeah. We really like it. Because if we didn't like it, we'd be convicted. You might know what good old fashioned conviction is. Amen. You might know what that is. That's something we've lost out on in the church today is conviction. You study most of, of, of the churches around America today, and I'm not throwing off because there's some good churches in America. There's some good churches in the world. But one thing we've lost in the body of Christ is conviction over our sins. Some of us grew up in churches where they, we was told that once we got saved, it didn't matter what we done after that. We were still saved. And therefore, we went about in life and even though we might have tripped and stumbled after we got saved and the Holy Spirit spoke to us, but because we had this confidence in knowing that, hey, everything's cool. I just go on. Pretty soon our conscience became seared to where that we didn't even we didn't even listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit anymore. We just said, Oh, praise God, I'm covered by the blood, and we went on in our sin. And we kept committing, we kept committing, we kept committing. And then you come up here and I and I tell you you can't live like that. That that's not the Bible. If you get mad, you leave, you don't come back for two or three months. But I'm telling you that we have got to have old time Holy Ghost conviction in our lives. We're never going to win anybody to the Lord until we get that conviction question answered in our own lives. Now I know the holiness preached holy living, and that's right. It's right. Believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm church of God. I'm classical church of God. Pentecostal. As Pentecostal church of my God as you can get. I'm there. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I can be church of God all day long, but if there's not conviction over my personal sin in my life, it won't matter. It won't get me to heaven. It won't help me one bit. Right. right. I've got to settle this issue in my own life. I've got to let God's convicting power come over me every day and examine my heart by the light of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I've got to come clean with God. Amen. And I can't come clean with God just by turning over a new leaf. I can't come clean with God just by making Him some kind of promise. No, I've got to go to the altar. And when I say go to the altar, I'm not talking about some altar of some church. I'm talking about the altar of my heart that goes to the foot of the cross. That goes to the foot of Calvary. And says, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Not my brother's sin. Not my sister's sin. Not my daddy and my mama's because they got to give account for their own. But before I can be anything for God, I've got to get it settled here for myself. And you do too. Before God's going to use you, before you're going to have the joy and the peace in your life that you need to have, you've got to get this issue settled in your life. You've got to come clean with God every day. And it only comes through faith in what Christ has done on that cross and believing that the blood has washed away your sin. Amen. It's the answer to our broken homes. It's the answer to our broken lives. It's the answer to everything in our life. We want our cake and eat it too. Somebody said we got Burger King religion. We want it our way. But I'm going to tell you, you can't get it your way. This ain't Burger King. You can't have it the way you want it. You've got to have it the way the Scriptures point out. Right. The Bible says, and God says, oh, there He says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Right. He tells us these things that if we really truly love Him, are you saying, Bruce Weeks, that I don't truly love God? Listen, I'm not your judge. But if the Holy Spirit's talking in your heart right now, 
got problems. I'm just a messenger. You shoot the mailman every time he brings you a bill? I mean, wouldn't that be foolish to go out there and say, you sorry, no damn little, 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 I don't want this light bill from call me and say, you sorry, you sorry. You don't know, to try that. I just love to see the look on his face. <laughs> Not cussing, just scary. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I love it, you're smiling. At least you're smiling. This is for the ones that's not here tonight. <laughs> but it's true. If we're ever going to do what it is that we need to do for God, we've got to be sold out to Him. And selling out is more than just saying, I believe. Selling out is more than just coming to church when the doors come open. Settling out is falling and kneeling at the foot of a holy Calvary in your heart and saying, Lord, here I am broken before You. Lord, I, I, I messed some things up in my life. Don't none of you dare get a pity party going now. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry, oh God. Look at me, I'm pitiful. We know you're pitiful. God knows you're pitiful. God knows you're messed up. Yes, amen. He don't want you coming with a pity party. He wants you coming with a broken, contrite heart that says, Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Yes, Jesus. I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry, Lord, that I've went against your word. God, I'm sorry that I've walked the way of the transgressor. Amen. God, I'm sorry for the attitude I've had. God, I want my home put back together. But Lord, I know you'll never be able to put it back together until I, I, not him, not her, but I. We were talking about this coming up the road. Katie and me was. We were talking about marriage. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how that we were talking we were talking we were talking about how how you when you when you get married there's a temptation of selfish pride to set in where you still get jealous of one another in the wrong spirit It takes both giving all you can to one another. If and Katie and me was talking about this, I said, you take a you take a man and a woman and they're married, and one of those in that marriage is not pulling their weight, and the other one's really trying hard. I said they can be Christian, and listen, the the, the divorce rate in the church is higher than the divorce rate in the world. Amen. And you take a you take a man or a woman and one of them is not pulling her weight. And I'm not talking about, you know, you can define that any way you want to. But you know when a person's giving it what they need to be given. But if a person is not pulling their weight, here comes Satan. And Satan brings the temptation with him. Yeah. And, and you know you know how it goes. It goes that way a hundred times every day. Thousands of times every day. He goes to work. She goes to work. He's a little disgruntled. She's a little disgruntled. She starts talking to some guy at work. He starts talking to some gal at work. That person's husband or wife, you know, they went south. And next thing you know, they're they're talking about their their just kind of went south, and they begin to compare notes, and and, and all of a sudden the, the light goes off, and they say, "Wow, we were really meant for one another." <laughs> How many times does that happen? All the time, every single day, it happens. And folks, that is the devil 